We're going to look at how to create an Excel tracker using Power Query to pull in US dollars to pounds exchange rates. And to do that, uh, the first thing we're going to want to do is I have this website here that we're going to pull in a live table and be able to refresh. So every day the US dollar British pounds will, will update so we can go and see what the current rate is and also look back maybe in time to see historical uh, data. So the first thing to follow along here is we want to have this website available and I've got it copied on my clipboard. The second thing we are, we're going to do is we're going to go to Excel and create a new blank workbook and then from here we're going to navigate to the data tab and where we see get data we'll have the ability to bring it in from a website. So that these are just our different sources here. We can see from web. This will open up um, a chance for me to paste that link. I'll hit OK. Then we get here, we'll see this is our data uh, set right here. Okay. So I'm going to hit transform data. This will open up the, the Power Query editor. This is a separate window. And I'm using Microsoft 365 on a Windows PC to allow me to have this tool set here. And uh, today um, is up to date. It's the 12th. I get the yesterday's date here. And so everything um, is, is really looking nice here, right here. Okay. Now we need to do some transformations here because... We're never going to want this first row selected here. So we can just remove that first row. And I can go ahead and do that by clicking Remove Rows, Remove uh, Top Rows, and it'll always be the first row when we refresh. Over on the right hand side, it's going to add a step like a macro, and it does the code behind the scenes here. All right, the second thing we want to do is transform to promote this to the headers. So to do that, we can click a button here that says use first row as headers. Okay. And so we can see that we've got date, US dollar to British pound, a link, and then this column here, not quite sure what that is, but we really, we really don't need that. So there's an option here that says choose columns and we don't need to bring in that fourth column here. Hit OK. Awesome. All right. I'm going to uh, send this over to Microsoft Excel. We're going to come back because we definitely need to extract this right here. So I'm going to just hit um, close and load. Yeah, let's just close and load. It will come in as a new table here. Um, and there we go. So we have that. So let me pause the recording, come back. We're going to make some edits to this here. All right. So taking a look at this is our data connection. And so in theory, we're going to be able to click refresh to update it to get the latest uh, exchange rate information here. Um, to get back into the Power Query Editor, we can double click the queries and connections here. If you don't see this, this is available on the data tab, queries and connections button here. Just double click it to open it up or right click it. All right. And uh, we are going to uh, actually change up. We don't need this, this column here at all. So over on the right where it says removed other columns, I can click on this gear icon here and then turn off that link here. Perfect. Okay. So how do we get this to a date format? 
by clicking on the ABC and changing it to a date. And perfect. So that is now properly formatted in a date. Okay. Next step is we need to get rid of this right here or transform it to only pull out the exchange rate. So we want it to be a numerical value here. So we're going to create a third column and let's just take a look at doing that. So we would click add column, columns from examples. Okay. And so I'm going to just come in here and start to type uh, 0 0.74822. I hit enter. Um, automatically, it sees the pattern and it has automatically given us all these other numbers in here. And so that is awesome. Um, I'm going to hit OK. And then we need to come in here and like rename that to uh, pounds. It's also a numerical value, so we're going to then change this to a a number. It is a decimal. Perfect. So there we go here. So we really don't need this any longer. Um, it is possible we could take that out and still keep the re the, the relationships to it, but for simplicity's sake. Um, Let's leave it here for now, and let's go ahead and uh, save, close and load. Perfect. And so here we have the date and the pounds here. I could easily extract this into maybe a pivot table. And it looks like this particular website has a certain ex uh, opportunity to pull it back um, however many you know months or so uh, six months or so so but notice I don't I don't need that last row here so I'm going to go back to the power query editor I'm getting an error that's because of that last row see how I tried to do a calculation on that last row so no problem I can go to the home tab and always remove the bottom one rows here Let's say one then OK. Perfect. Um, now I got to show you guys how cool that formula was. Remember how we got this? It looked easy, but there's a lot of work behind the scenes here. And remember how I did columns from examples? Well, over on the right hand side, these are all the steps that we've done in Power Query. There is this step right here, inserted text between columns. I'm going to click on this gear here and show you there's actually a space here, and it's from the start of the input. So as it's going through, it is text between delimiters. And so it is able to extract this text here between delimiters. It skipped two, so one, two, and then it did the magic work here to pull it out. Remember, it, it did pull it out as text, but then remember I had to convert it to a number, and that's what we'll see further down here I changed the data type to a number on this step here so now it's a, a number but going back to that here uh, imagine trying to write the code here now nah, no thank you um, it, 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 it uh, was easy enough for us to just type the example and it found it so awesome um, at this point in time, I, I'm happy with the conversion. We save and close. If I were to save this workbook and open it up two years from now, all I need to do is hit refresh, and I would have the last uh, six months or however that website pulls in from that information there. Last thing I'm going to do is create a little pivot table. So I'm on the table design tab. I'm going to click summarize with pivot table on a new worksheet. And I can bring in the dates in the rows, and I can bring in the pounds here. Um, and it's trying to summarize that. I really just need to do something like that because there's no need to no need to really do a summary at the bottom. But you can start to see that's that is our summary. It might make sense to do an average. 
So value field settings, do an average, possibly a, and so you'll see the average. These, these are average uh, exchange rates uh, per, per month. Um, and then from here, it is totally possible to even do a, a, a pivot chart as well, like maybe a line chart. And uh, kind of build off of that as well uh, from there. So uh, really, really interesting stuff. That can really, um, I don't know, enjoy enjoy the Power connection, power Query connections. Hopefully this demo was helpful, yeah, particularly if you're looking to pull in US dollars to pounds um, on the fly. Um, I'll put a link to that website in the ch in the link uh, description below in YouTube. Be sure to subscribe, subscribe to the channel, and write a comment to let me know if this video was helpful to you. Thank you.